the module that we are going to discuss with you today is analysis of variance one way classification. The objectives of the module are the students will be able to learn the rationale of ANOVA in comparison to T test. They will also be able to learn the factorial designs. They will also be able to learn calculation and uses of ANOVA. They will also be able to understand the assumptions and limitations of analysis of variance. The T test of significance is adequate to any experiment that involves only two groups and only a single factor. It provides only a test of a single mean difference. But suppose we have an experimental design involving three groups A, B and C with each group tested after a different experimental treatment or under a different set of conditions. The use of t-test as a relatively simple statistical technique would still be possible. It would involve taking two groups means at a time and testing the significance of the difference. The number of mean comparisons in this case would be three. That is A and B, A and C, and B and C. However, the problem arises when the number of groups is larger, say five or more. If we have 10 groups, the number of comparisons which would be required under t-test would be given by the formula. The formula is like this, n times n minus 1 upon 2. That is 10 times 9 upon 2. The total number of comparisons are now 45. Obviously, some method of testing differences among all the means at the same time would prove very valuable. The analysis of variance and the corresponding test of significance based upon F distribution permit us to do this. Another important consideration which rules out the use of t-test warrants the use of the more sophisticated F test of significance is the use of situations in which two or more experimental variables or one experimental and one or more control variables are simultaneously operating. And not only comparison of means within each variable is required, but also the joint operation of interaction of two or more variables is of interest. Dear students, let's now take a look at the brief history of this technique. A technique of analysis of variance was first devised by Sir Ronald Fisher, an English statistician who is also considered to be the father of modern statistics as applied to social and behavioral sciences. It was first reported in 1923 and its early applications were in the field of agriculture. Since then, it has found wide applications in many areas of experimentation. Now I come to the technique. The analysis of variance, as the name indicates, deals with variance rather than with standard deviations and standard errors. It's a method of dividing the variation observed in experimental data into different parts, each part assignable to a known source, cause or factor. We may assess the relative magnitude of variation resulting from different sources and ascertain whether a particular part of the variation was greater than expectation under the null hypothesis. However, it may be remembered that analysis of variance divides the total sum of squares into additive parts, which are then converted into mean squares simply by dividing the sum of squares with the relevant degrees of freedom. The main difference between variance and mean square is that the former is obtained by dividing the sum of squares by n while the latter is obtained by dividing the sum of squares by degrees of freedom. Hence, it is advisable to keep this fact in view while understanding the rationale of the analysis of variance. Dear students, in its simplest form, the analysis of variance is used to test the significance of the differences among means of a number of different groups, supposed to have come from different populations. The total sum of squares 
is analyzed into two parts. The sum of squares based upon variation within the several groups and the sum of squares based upon variation between the groups means then from the two sums of squares independent estimates of the population variance are computed. The value of f is then the ratio between the two estimates of the population variance. Now, the formula for this is f is equal to variance between upon variance within. In short, we can write it like this variance b upon variance w in which variance is the standard symbol of population variance. One way or single classification is the first thing that we are going to discuss with you. In its simplest form, ANOVA can be used when a number of treatments based on a single factor are involved. For example, in a field experiment, three randomly selected groups have been assigned randomly to three different experimental treatments, say traditional method, program learning method and multimedia method. At the end, the criterion scores are obtained. The mean scores of three groups can then be compared using analysis of variance. Since only one factor that is method of teaching, of course, with three variations of the method is involved, the situation warrants a single classification of one way analysis of variance and can be diagrammed as below. Dear students, take a look at this, this table. It has three columns. The first column is about program running method and the second is multimedia method. Third one is about traditional method and we have the axis with subscripts. Now under program running method we have x11, x21, x31 and so on up to xn1 and under multimedia method we have x12, x22, x32 and up to xn2. Under traditional method we have x13, x23, x33 and n3. This shows the first method, the second method and the third method which are program running method, multimedia method and traditional method in which x stands for the scores, subscripts for individual columns and n1, n2, n3 for number of persons in each group. Dear students, now we are taking up the deviation score method which is actually a method where we take deviations of the raw scores from the mean and then we work out the further, further technique. Right. Dear students, in table 1, fictitious data has been given. In set 2, all values have been kept equal. The purpose is to explain an important point later in the discussion. The three sets of scores were hypothetically obtained under three different conditions or treatments. The hypothesis to be tested is whether all the observation came by random sampling from the same general population or were three systematic overall differences among the three sets of means. In terms of symbols, we have HO that is a null hypothesis is equal to mu1 is equal to mu2 is equal to mu3 is equal to mu. Now the alternative hypothesis as symbolized by H1 is like this. Mu1 is not equal to mu2 is not equal to mu3 is not equal to mu. In verbal terms, the null hypothesis states that the means of the three populations do not differ among themselves and are equal to the mean of the general population. The alternative hypothesis expresses that these means are not equal. The students in calculation of analysis of variance, you have to take several steps. And now we are going to explain to you the various steps that are supposed to be taken when we use deviation score method. Take a look at table 1. It has hypothetical scores and it has three sets of scores. Each set has 10 scores 
And then in the first section of the table, we have the sums of the scores under all the three sets. And we have also calculated the means. The set two, we have taken the deviations within sets. And then in the third section of the table, we have scores of the deviations within sets. Dear students, now in very specific words, I'm going to tell you these steps. We compute the sum of scares within sets. Compute the sum of means of all the three sets, the grand total, sigma x, and the grand mean, mt. For every set, compute deviations from the set mean, mx, by using formula small x is equal to x minus ms. Designate them as x, s, or deviation within sets. Dear students, now square the deviations within sets to find small x square. Add them to obtain sigma small x square s. These are some of squares of deviations within sets. We go further down to the calculation of sum of squares between sets. For each set, take the deviations between each set mean and grand mean, that is ms minus mt, and call them d. Squares each d and sum them up to obtain sigma d square. Multiply each d square by n, the number of scores in each set, and sum them up to obtain n summation d square. The value is sum of squares between sets. We go further down to another step, and we calculate the total sum of squares. The total sum of squares can be obtained by adding the sum of squares within sets and the sum of squares between sets. However, for the purpose of verification of the relationship between these three types of sums of squares, total sum of squares can be calculated directly by subtracting each score from the grand mean, squaring the deviation, and summing all the deviations up. In our example, the total sum of squares is equal to 10 minus 6 square plus 7 minus 6 square plus dash 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 plus 10 minus 6 square it totals up to 322. It checks with the value obtained by adding sum of squares within sets and sum of squares between sets. The students should thus understand the following relationship. The total sum of squares is equal to within sum of squares plus between sum of squares. Or in symbol, we say SST is equal to SSW plus SSB. Then between sets, sum of squares is equal to total sum of squares minus within sum of squares. Or in symbols, SSB is equal to SST minus SSW. Then within sets, sum of squares is equal to total sum of squares minus between sum of squares. In symbolic form, we have SSW is equal to SST minus SSB. Now we go to the calculation of degrees of freedom and mean squares. Degrees of freedom can be calculated by using the following procedure. Degrees of freedom total is equal to total number of scores minus one or n minus one or 30 minus one. That gives me 29 as the total degrees of freedom. Then degrees of freedom between is equal to number of sets minus one or s minus one or three minus one, and the final value is two. Now I come to the degrees of freedom within. Uh, this is obtained by using this procedure. Number of scores in each set minus one, and then multiplied by number of sets. And in symbolic form, s times n minus one. Now by putting the values in this small formula, we have three times 10 minus one, that is three times nine, that's equal to 27. The sum of degrees of freedom for between and within sets should add up to the total degrees of freedom. The mean squares for each source of variation can be obtained by dividing the sum of squares by the respective DF. With all the above computational results at our command, we can set up a table of summary of annual subvariance results by given in table two. 
and the formula is like this f is equal to m s between upon m s within that is 90 upon 5.26 and final value is 17 upon 11 and the degrees of freedom are 2 and 27. The summary of analysis of variance at a glance. Now, here is a table 2. It has 5 columns. The first column shows the source of variation or the component of variation. Second column is about sum of squares or SS. The third column is about degrees of freedom. Then we have mean squares, MS. The final or last column is gives us the value of F. Students, good to set up a table like this when we do the interpretation. Now, between sets and within sets and total, these are the three sources of variation. Then they have the numerical values that we have obtained through calculation. Each have between sets is 180, sums of squares, degrees of freedom are 2, mean squares are 90, and F value is 17.11. Within sets, then we have sum of squares 142, degrees of freedom 27, and mean squares is 5.26. And we come to the total now, simply by adding up the above two values, we get 322 and then 29. This table is highly useful for understanding the procedure and doing the interpretation of the F value. Now, the interpretation of the value of F. The calculated value of F is 17.11, which is to be compared with the value of F required for significance at 0 0.05 and 0 0.01 levels. For this purpose, we consult the table of F given at the end of this module. Reading of any F value from the table depends upon the DF for greater mean squares that is between sets and df for smaller mean squares that is the within mean square. The former are given vertically in the columns and the latter horizontally in the rows. The value at the intersection of the two is the value of f at a particular level of significance with df as mentioned above. In this table, the upper values are at 0 0.05 level while the lower ones are at 0 0.01 level. In our case, the values of f from the table are f at 0 0.05 level with degrees of freedom 2 and 27 is equal to 3.35. And value of f at 0 0.01 level with degrees of freedom 227, the value of f is equal to 5.49. The calculated value of f is higher than both the values of f at 0 0.05 and 0 0.01 level. Since 0 0.01 level is higher, we can interpret that the calculated value of f is significant at 0 0.01 level. Hence, the null hypothesis or HO cannot be accepted. It can be said that the overall differences among the three set means are significant and not due to chance. The three sets do not belong to the same population with regard to their means. As pointed out earlier, all scores in set 2 were purposely kept equal. The main objective was to explain an important point. This set has a zero within variance because all scores are equal to the set mean and hence it does not contribute anything to the variance within sets. In the same manner, the mean of set 1 is equal to the grand mean and hence does not contribute anything to the variance between sets. Dear students, so far we have done analysis of variance by using the deviation score method. However, you may not use the deviation score method. You may use simply the raw score method. In this case, you can use just the scores and do not calculate the means. You do not calculate the deviations. You simply use the raw scores and you can further go ahead with the calculation of SS, MS, and value of F. The students, now take a look at the table given here. And I'm going to demonstrate the
calculation of ANOVA by using Raskor method. This table has, once again, three sets of scores. These sets of scores were also used for the purpose of deviation score method. Now, but I'm going to use only the Raskor method now. Set one has the scores shown as x1. And after that, we have the x squares, that each score squared. Then set two, we have the x's, like three, 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 all through. And then we have their squares under the column x square, nine, 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 nine etc. And then under set three, again, we have the raw scores as x3, and then their squares as x3 square. And underneath, we have the sum of squares and the sum of scores given here. Sum of scores are 60, and sum of squares for set one is 460, and so on and so forth. For set two, we have sum of scores as 30, and sum of squares as 90, and so on for set three. Then we have, in this case, further mentioned that n is equal to 30, n1 is equal to n2 is equal to n3 is equal to 10. It means all the three sets have equal number of scores, that's n. And then we have sigma x, the total. That gives me 60 plus 30 plus 90 is equal to 180. This is sum of scores within all the three sets. And then we calculate the sum of squares. For this purpose, we have to calculate a correction term, we call it c. And this we obtained by using the formula sigma x whole square upon n, or you can say t square upon n, that gives me 180 squared upon 30, and that is 1080. And then the second step is we calculate the total sum of squares, we call it SST. And this is like this, sigma x square minus correction. And this shows SST is equal to 10 square plus 7 square plus 6 square, so on and so forth, up to 10 square. And that is 1402 minus 1080 is equal to 322. Now, I'm going to show you how to calculate the sum of squares among set means. This is sigma x1 whole square upon n1 plus sigma x2 whole square upon n2 plus sigma x3 whole square upon n3 minus correction. And the values are 60 square upon 10 plus 30 square upon 10 plus 90 square upon 10 minus 1080. And finally, is equal to 1260 minus 1080 is equal to 180. This is the value of the sum of squares among set means. Now, sum of squares within sets. We can find out sum of squares within sets by simply subtracting the SSB from SST. That's what we have done here. 322 minus 180, and the final value is 142. Then we set up a summary of nerves of variance so that we can have, at a glance, the values that we have obtained. And this, again, once again, shows four columns, sources of variation between sets, within sets in total, degrees of freedom, then sum of squares, then mean square. And then between sets, we have two degrees of freedom, SS is 180, and mean square is 90. Within sets, we have 27 as degree of freedom, and the value of sum of squares is 142, and mean square is 5.26. Total is degrees of freedom equal to 29. Now the sum of squares for total is 322. Then we calculate the value of F, by dividing 90 by 5.26. That gives me a value 17.11. And this is the procedure of calculating the F value by using the raw score method. Dear students, it may be noted that all sums of squares, mean square, and the values of F are the same as obtained by using the 
by using deviation score method. The raw score method is to be preferred when score values are small, the means are not whole numbers, and a calculating machine is to be used. However, with small data and numbers, the deviation score method should be used. Now, in conclusion, in this module, a description of the concepts, mathematical model, computational steps with calculations and interpretation of results of ANOVA have been presented. The assumptions, uses, and limitations of ANOVA have been given in the next module on two-way inertia variance. Student will be well advised to do some practice on these points. Thank you.